The Shaping of a Behaviorist, Part 2 of an Autobiography, 1979, by B.F. Skinner, follows the life of Burris Frederick Skinner, one of the most eminent psychologists of the 20th century, who is best known for his influence on behaviorism and his work on operant conditioning. This autobiographical volume is a continuation of Skinner's detailing of his life and career and focuses on his mature work and ideas. The book begins with Skinner reflecting on his early academic pursuits and professional development. Skinner provides a deep dive into his life during the 1930s and 1940s, a significant period during which he developed his theories and completed most of his groundbreaking research. He talks about his time as a graduate student at Harvard, where his experiments with rats lead to the formulation of his ideas on operant conditioning, which later became a central tenet of behavioral psychology. Skinner conveys his fascination with the experimental analysis of behavior and his desire to understand the relationship between stimuli and responses. His famous invention, the Skinner box, is discussed, a device that allowed him to study the behavior of organisms through systematic and controlled observations. He elucidated on the concepts of reinforcement and punishment emphasizing the importance of consequences in shaping behavior. Skinner was profoundly interested in the application of his theories beyond the laboratory. He believed that the principles he uncovered had the potential to benefit society, particularly in the fields of education and mental health. He discusses his foray into applied behavior analysis and his attempts to use behaviorist principles in real-world settings. This includes his involvement in the development of educational tools and the design of teaching machines that aim to optimize learning by reinforcing correct responses in students. The book does not shy away from detailing Skinner's philosophical and theoretical stances, particularly his views on the nature of free will and determinism. Skinner was well known for his contention that the concept of free will was an illusion and that human action was the result of environmental contingencies. He argues that understanding the environmental determinants of behavior can lead to more effective ways to shape and control it, thus benefiting society as a whole. Throughout the book, Skinner also explores the criticisms and challenges he faced from opponents of behaviorism. He reflects on the controversies that his ideas, such as the societal implications of behavior modification and the ethical dimensions of controlling human behavior, caused. Skinner acknowledges these issues but remains steadfast in his belief that behaviorism, if properly applied, stands as a powerful tool for improving the human condition. Skinner's accounts are interwoven with personal anecdotes that provide readers with an intimate look at the man behind the theory. He speaks about his family life, his relationships with colleagues, and his experiences within the academic community. The narrative also delves into the publishing of his book, Walden II, a fictional utopia guided by behaviorist principles, which sparked both interest and controversy due to its vision of a society meticulously engineered around behavioral science. Progressing to the 1950s and 1960s, Skinner describes the expansion of his influence in the world of psychology and the wider recognition of his ideas. He recounts the development of additional behavioral technologies and discusses the broader implications of his work for society, including the potential for behavioral modification to address issues such as overpopulation and environmental degradation. In the latter part of the book, Skinner contemplates the state of psychology and his place within it. He critiques other prevailing psychological theories and practices of his time, particularly those that he felt failed to accurately describe behavior through observable and measurable variables. Though recognizing the complexity and vastness of human behavior, Skinner argues for the necessity of a science of behavior based on empirical evidence and experimentation. One cannot ignore Skinner's vision for a cultural engineering based on scientific principles that could potentially lead to a more harmonious and productive society. He envisioned a world where behaviors could be shaped not only to reduce suffering and enhance individual well-being, but also to create communal systems that encourage cooperation and shared success. Reflecting on his career, Skinner contemplates the legacy of his work and its implications for future generations of psychologists and behaviorists. 
He discusses the advancements made in the field, the continued relevance of his theories, and the new directions in which the science of behavior might evolve. His work had already survived several decades of scientific progress and socio-political change, but Skinner understood that the concepts he put forward would be subject to ongoing scrutiny and adaptation. The autobiography concludes with Skinner looking forward, both with optimism and a sense of pragmatism. He acknowledges the limits of his contributions, but expresses confidence in the foundations he laid for a behaviorist understanding of human conduct. He emphasizes the need for ongoing research and the adoption of behavioral principles to address the myriad challenges facing humanity. As a whole, the shaping of a behaviorist is not only the story of Skinner's life and work, but also a manifesto for the field of behaviorism itself. Skinner presents a compelling narrative showcasing the development and maturation of his scientific and intellectual beliefs, the application of his theories, and his hopes for their future impact. It serves as an important testament to the historical significance of behaviorism and to Skinner's enduring influence on psychological thought and practice.